joining us by television and by radio from around the world. Uh, welcome into our Sunday morning uh, service. Those that are listening by radio, I want to encourage you to log on to www.theshepherdshouse.net and you can see the entirety of this program and check out our ministry. We have several uh, hits every week from people from around the world. Also, uh, folks that are watching my live streaming, send a message, or uh, if you would like to, I encourage you to share this on your timelines, if you're watching by Facebook, uh, so that other people can join our service from around the world. we got people from several countries from around the world that joins us every week by radio, by TV, and by live streaming. We do appreciate that. I want to make an announcement. This coming, uh, or this next Sunday, which will be uh, December the 15th, we're going to have our birthday party for Jesus here, the 17th, 15th or 17th, which is it? 17th, thank y'all. 17th, i got to have about six of them to keep me straight. Uh, uh, December the 17th, uh, and that's going to be right after our morning worship service. We're going to have the birthday party for Jesus, and we're going to have it after service back in the back with soups and chilies and sandwiches. And then we're going to have cake and ice cream. We're going to have a birthday party, have some Christian games uh, and fellowship, and then we're going to have birthday cake and ice cream, and we're going to sing happy birthday to Jesus. He is the reason for the season. And um, we have so much of the ho-ho and uh, all this other stuff, and uh, I'm not against that. We've got a Christmas tree up also, and we uh, exchange gifts just like everybody else does as long as we keep it in the right uh, manner, in the right portion, and we don't get over flooded with this. And remember the real reason. So I want to take time uh, to really uh, think and to celebrate Christmas uh, for what it really means. And that will be here at the Shepherd's House Sunday, December the 17th, right after our morning worship service. So come out and be with us, and we're looking forward to having our great time in the Lord. All right, let's read together in St. Mark's Gospel, uh, chapter number 5. St. Mark, chapter number 5, verse number 1 says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with, the, I'm sorry, John chapter number 4. Excuse me, I got the wrong page. John chapter number 4, verse 1. I just love it when the devil messes with me because I know he's fixing to get stepped on. All right, John chapter number 4, verse number 1. When therefore, I knew that wasn't right because I thought I preached on that last week. Uh, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink, for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said, uh, unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then 
Hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, I shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto her, unto him, excuse me, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knew us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we Excuse me, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, uh, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. In St. John chapter 7, verse 37 says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. That he believeth, excuse me, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, I shall Christ come out of Galilee. Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him, and some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on on him. Let's pray. Father, in the living name of Jesus, come in before you once again this day. I ask you, Lord, to hide us again behind the shadow of the cross, that no glory would come to me in the flesh, but Father, that the name of Jesus might be praised, uplifted, and glorified for now and forevermore. I ask you, Father, to move mightily, Lord, our Father, on the hearts of all that's here today and all that's watching or listening from around the world. I pray to God for the hearts that are broken. Lord, for those that feel like that they have no hope, I pray to God that they would understand that there's somebody that really does love them. And Father, we pray that everyone, Lord, would understand that in this Christmas season, that Lord, the greatest gift of all was Jesus Christ. And Lord, that all of the love that every one of us has in our hearts, Lord, we know the word says it. Uh, we we love him because he first loved us. And Father, we know that all love comes down from the Father of lights. Lord, we know that all love, Lord, comes from heaven. And Lord, we thank you for that love. And we thank you for that generosity. And I thank you for this season, Lord. Our Father, where people are sharing that love one with another. We pray, dear God, that all of us would remember, Lord, about this greatest gift and about the great love, Father of Jesus, and how he gave his life so that all of us could freely receive eternal life. Lord, we just pray that you would touch and bless, and those that feels like they have no hope, help them to believe and see that there is a way out, there is a way through, and there is hope. Through Jesus Christ, we give you honor, praise, and glory for being such a good God. And it's in Jesus' loving name we humbly pray and ask all these things. Amen. Looking back into the Word of God, we see how that Jesus uh, went and he sat there at Jacob's well. 
and it was about the sixth hour, which would have been somewhere around 12 noon. And as he sat there at the well, there was a Samaritan woman that came to get water. There's no doubt that Samaritan woman had came to get water hundreds of times down through her life. Amen. This Samaritan woman had some obstacles that she was uh, living through and she was uh, having to deal with. Number one, we'll find later in the scripture uh, where that she was unmarried. And we'll also find, uh, amen, where she's had five husbands uh, in the past and now then the one that she's living with is not her husband. Uh, it's just a boyfriend. other words in today's language or today's lingo it would be called uh, living together or as I call it shacking up. Amen is what it's called and you don't hear that talked about very much anymore because uh, it's even bled over into the church uh, where there's a lot of people that it does that uh, and they're living in fornication or they're living in adultery. Uh, this woman had a whole lot of garbage uh, amen that she was uh, packing with her everywhere that she went. Uh, amen. Number one uh, she was considered to be a heathen. Uh, amen. She was lost. Uh, she had no hope. Uh, amen. She didn't have uh, amen the promise uh, of going to heaven when all of life is over because she didn't know anything about Jesus. She didn't even know about uh, the sacrifices uh, that the Jews gave. Uh, amen. And any type of purification or the Holy of Holies or the Mosaic Law because she was a Samaritan. Uh, had no knowledge of God. Uh, amen at all. And she was sure living in shame. Uh, amen. Had had a rough life. Uh, amen. No doubt. Uh, amen. She had a lot uh, of disappointments. There's no doubt. She had five men that let her down. Uh, amen. Because she'd been married and divorced, uh, amen, five times. Uh, you know in society she wasn't looked at very well, amen, in the eyes of a lot of people. Uh, so here she went to the well, amen, to get this water, lost and without God, no knowledge of God, no hope of where she was going to spend eternity. And the only ones that knew about God wouldn't talk to her because she was uh, thought of as being dirty and unclean, uh, amen, and lesser than anybody else. And it isn't amazing how that God set all of this up for Jesus to be away from the disciples as they went to buy meat. And Jesus knew exactly who it was that was coming to that well that day. Amen. She, he went to the whoremonger, the lost one, the dirtiest that there was, and the one that had the least hope. Amen. In the entire city, and the one that none of his disciples or anybody else would have ever took time to talk to. Isn't it amazing how Jesus just went ahead uh, by himself, uh, sat down on the edge of the well uh, and waited, uh, thinking she'll be here in just a minute and she'll have hope. She'll be here in just a minute uh, and I'm not going to condemn her I'm going to forgive her of her sins. I'm going to give her life. Amen. And I'm going to surprise her. She's not going to know who it is that's sitting here on the edge of this well. And here come the woman. Amen. I can see her with the water pot. Amen. Probably upon her head or upon her shoulders. And she come up to the well and she saw Jesus there thinking, I wonder who this stranger is. And all at once Jesus went to talking to her. And uh, uh, the woman, she couldn't understand how. She said, you're a Jew, and the Jews uh, don't have any dealings uh, with us Samaritans. Uh, why are you talking to me? Amen. And Jesus let her know, if you knew who it was uh, that you were talking to, you could ask of me living water and, uh, of water, and I would give you a living water that would flow from your bellies. Uh, and she said, I don't understand this. Uh, uh, how are you going to get water? This is... Jacob's well here. And how are you going to get water? How are you going to get water from a well? You don't even have a bucket. You don't have anything to draw water with. How are you going to get this water? And Jesus tried to make her understand Amen. that he was the water. He was the one. He said you can drink of this water in a little while you're going to thirst again. Tomorrow you're going to want to come back and then again the next day. But the water that I give you it'll be water that'll 
flow from your belly. Living water, in other words, there'll be no end to it. Uh, and there'll never be a need. Uh, you'll never thirst anymore. And all at once she looked at him and she said, then give me this water that I won't thirst anymore. Uh, amen. He told her to go call your husband. Uh, and she said, I don't have one. Uh, he said, you rightly said, uh, you've had five husbands uh, and the one that you have now is not your own. Uh, amen. Living in adultery. Uh, but he gave her mercy. He gave her forgiveness. Uh, he gave her the opportunity. Amen. To receive heaven uh, as her home uh, and to feel the presence uh, of the, the holiness of God uh, and the spirit of the Lord uh, that could rest inside of her. Uh, one that had no hope. Uh, one that had no life. Uh, amen. No direction that she could go in. Uh, amen. Jesus stood. Uh, amen. In chapter 7. Uh, amen. At the great day of the feast. Uh, amen. And cried out to all of those. Uh, amen. That thirst to come uh, and drink. Uh, amen. Of this river of living water. Uh, amen. He's asking the world today. Uh, amen. All of those. Uh, amen. That feels like they have no hope. Uh, all of those that are bound in sin. All of those that are uh, tied up. Uh, amen. In adultery. And all of those. Uh, amen. That, that's got things that's not right uh, in your life. Uh, amen. That the religious crowd. Uh, amen. Will quickly tell you that you're going to hell. Uh, amen. Those. Uh, amen. That religious people will quickly tell you what you're doing is not right. And I'm going to say this to the church. Uh, they ain't no use of going to people uh, and telling them what they're doing is not right. They know it's not right. Uh, you just need to go to them uh, and tell them that Jesus will forgive them uh, and that there's hope uh, that the Messiah, amen, hasn't uh, not just coming, he's already came once uh, in the form of a baby. When he comes back, he's going to be king, uh, amen, of glory, amen, coming in the clouds, uh, amen, the first time he came, uh, amen, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes uh, and laid in a manger, amen, where the cattle trough, uh, amen, was where the feed trough is, uh, Amen. Uh, where the, the donkeys and the rest of the animals are. Uh, amen. He was there. Amen. Uh, with them. Uh, amen. Brought hope. Uh, amen. To the hopeless. Uh, he came unto his own. Uh, and his own received him not. Uh, but those that will believe, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Uh, amen. Uh, I'm glad that this woman, uh, amen, being a Samaritan, amen, had the ability to hear the word of God. And I'm going to say this to every one of you that are sitting real still and real quiet. Uh, amen. It wouldn't take much for me to get up and run while my pastor is preaching like this. <laughs> Amen, because I once was lost, amen, and had no hope. Amen, I once was a castaway, and Jesus found me. I once was junk. I once was trash, and I'm so thankful that the Holy One of Israel went into the trash can, amen, pulled back, amen, the filth and the ungodliness and the vomit that's in that trash can, and said, Jimmy, you're down there somewhere, boy, and I'm going to call you to preach, and I'm going to make somebody out of you, and I'm going to send you around the world, uh, amen, so that people will hear the gospel uh, and pull me out, uh, amen, cleanse me with the red blood, uh, amen, that was uh, shed uh, on the cross of Calvary, amen, baptize me in the Holy Ghost uh, and with fire, amen, give me the anointing uh, and said, now you that had no hope, uh, go tell everybody about the hope that you have now, uh, amen, through Christ Jesus, uh, amen, listen, folks, I want to tell you something. Uh, amen. Christmas is a good time of the year. Uh, amen. But every day should be Christmas. Uh, and I can't wait till Easter comes. Uh, I wish they'd just replace Christmas with Easter. Uh, amen. It's such a good uh, amen time. But you had to have Christmas first. I understand. Or there wouldn't be an Easter. Uh, amen. I'm thankful for Christmas. Uh, but I'm most of all thankful. Amen. There's somebody. Amen. That'll reach way below the bottom. Uh, amen. And pick up the trash like me. Uh, amen. And use me for something. Uh, amen, to build his kingdom. Uh, amen, he'll use you for something. Uh, amen, the Lord has the ability, amen, to take, uh, amen, a harlot, uh, amen, to make a Sunday school teacher out of her. Uh, amen, he has the ability to take a wine, oh, amen, and call him to preach, uh, amen, the gospel. Uh, he has the ability, amen, to, uh, to, to call the biggest whoremonger, amen, to the biggest thief that there is in the country uh, and make a bank president out of him. 
Amen. He's able to lift you up. Amen. And take you into places. Amen. By the human mind. Amen. That man won't trust you. Amen. But there'll be something that lives inside of you. Amen. That'll go with you. Amen. Listen, and you will find favor. Amen. Where there's never been any favor before. Amen. I've known many times where Christians, uh, amen, would go in and they'd say you'd have to wait all these hours and they'd sit down over there and they'd pray and all at once, to, amen, the person said, I tell you what, I, do, I think we got a minute or two here slack. You slip on through the door right here and come on back here to the room and say it. Uh, I'm going to let you come on in. Uh, ain't nobody here to watch right now. Come on in. God let you have favor. Uh, amen. The Lord will let us have favor. Amen. Over things. Uh, amen. Only through and by the power of God uh, can you get a report from the doctor. Amen. That you're not going to live. Amen. You get a report from the Holy Ghost that you're going to be here for a long time. Amen. You can get a report from the doctor. Amen. That your family's going to die, but you'll get a report. Amen. From God that they shall live. Amen. God has a way. Amen. Of touching our hearts. Amen. Changing our lives. Amen. Lifting us up. Amen. When we are helpless and we are hopeless. I'm so thankful that those, amen, that thirst can come to the Lord. If you're not thirsty, you're not going to receive anything. But if you're thirsty for the Lord, he's got an infilling, amen, that he can give you, amen, that will give you a high, amen, like you ain't never received before. Amen. After you get a high from Jesus, uh, amen, you'd want to call Jack Daniels up and whoop him. Uh, amen. For being a hypocrite. Uh, amen. And a fake. Uh, amen. Listen, when you really get Jesus, uh, amen, you want to take, uh, amen, the drug peddler, peddler down here. Amen. That tried to sell you crack uh, and crank and meth uh, and say you ain't nothing but a fake. Uh, I got the real high and it didn't cost me anything. Uh, it was paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. I'm thankful the Lord can take a junkie. Amen man and make a, a DJ out of him on a Christian radio station. Uh, amen. God, uh, amen, can take a, a junkie, amen, and make a, a Christian, uh, amen, uh, television, uh, amen, cameraman, or whoever, uh, amen, he can call, uh, amen, the unqualified, uh, and make them qualified, uh, amen, he can call, uh, amen, the hopeless, uh, amen, and give them more hope uh, that the hope that they have in their life, uh, amen, will shine in their eyes. Uh, it will shine in them wherever they go. Uh, they'll see see the presence of God. They'll feel the presence of God. They'll know that God is real and that he really is the hope that you have. Amen. We got to the place today. Amen. You can preach the gospel, the power of God. Amen. Can come inside the church. Amen. There'll be one or two that'll have a handkerchief and the rest of them looks at the wall. Amen. Listen like they're looking at a new gate like a calf looking. Amen. At a new gate. I want you to know today I'm so thankful. Amen. For what Jesus did for me. And every time, amen, they play a gospel song and they share something about how he suffered. Amen. For me, it tears me up. Amen. And the only regret I got is I only brought one handkerchief to our two handkerchief service. Amen. Amen. Because, uh, amen, it touches my heart. Uh, he's real to me. Uh, I know right now today that I'd be dead uh, if it was for Jesus. Uh, I know right now today my children, one of them, uh, I know without a doubt would have done been dead uh, if it had not been for Jesus. Uh, I know today where my bread's buttered. Uh, I know today where my hope's at. Uh, I know today where my, who my life's in. And though all hell assails me, I shall prevail through everything. Uh, Amen. They can take my clothing. Uh, amen. They can take my property. They can take my businesses. Uh, amen. They can take everything I own. Uh, amen. But what I received in a little farmhouse uh, in Allen County, Kentucky in 1982. Amen. Beside my bathtub. Uh, amen. They can't nobody pluck me out of his hand. Uh, they can't nobody take him out of my heart. Uh, I'm thankful today. Uh, amen. When I received him, uh, I received hope. Uh, when I received him, uh, I received Christmas every day. Amen. When I received him, amen, who is, amen, the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I received the pearl of great price. I received hope. Amen. When it seemed like he is no hope. Amen. When the storms comes. Amen. When the devil sits upon your ear. Amen. And tells you how you're going to fall and how you're not going to make it and how you're not going to get through this and show you little visions. Amen. Of ungodliness and uh, how the devil 
devil's going to run you into the ground. Uh, amen. You can say, just hold it right there. I know who's inside of me. Uh, I know who bled and died on the cross uh, to pay for my sins. Uh, I know who it was, uh, amen, that reached into my heart uh, that was full of heaviness and full of sin uh, and full of rage uh, and pulled it out uh, and put his love and flooded my soul. Uh, amen. I come out of the bathtub, uh, out of the bathroom that day, clothed and in my right mind. Uh, amen. Because I met Jesus in the bathroom. Uh, amen. Praise God. This woman, uh, amen, met Jesus. Uh, amen. It's a well of all the places. Uh, amen. You would have uh, never would have thought, uh, amen, about meeting the Son of God uh, right in the middle of a day when you're busy and you're living in sin and you want to just slip up there and get you a drink of water and, and leave before all of those religious people comes up, uh, amen, turns their nose up at you uh, and looks down, uh, amen, at how bad that you are and what you've done uh, and how many you slept with. Uh, just want to slip up there, uh, amen, real quickly while nobody's looking and get you a drink of water. And next thing you know, she looking, there was God in the flesh. Amen, sitting right in front of her. Amen, there was Jesus. Amen, sitting right in front of her. Amen, right there. Amen, she didn't recognize who he was. Amen, listen, uh, the world don't recognize. Uh, amen, who Jesus is. I read here, amen, in the scripture just a few moments ago. Uh, amen, out of the word of God. Uh, amen, in John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter number 3. Uh, amen, uh, it says, Beloved, uh, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. <laughs> well, glory. Amen. We don't know, amen, how we're going to turn out when all of this is over. We don't know exactly what we're going to look like, but we know when we see him, I'm going to have a body that looks like his. I'm going to see him as he really is. Amen. Shining as the bright in the morning star. Amen. There'll be no sun in the place called heaven because Jesus is going to be the light. There won't be no Christmas trees because they'll look like a half-dead uh, lightning bug, uh, amen, compared to the beauty you're going to see, amen, in heaven, uh, amen, the reflection, uh, amen, we have nothing to fear, uh, amen, fear itself, uh, amen, comes from the enemy, uh, amen, the devil will try to scare you. Amen, if there had been a, a host of angels sitting around, uh, amen, the whale right there, if there had been a big uh, sign hanging up, Son of God right here, uh, it must be holy to come talk to him, she'd have not been able to win, and she'd have been so scared that she couldn't. But see, when Jesus just come to where she was going to be, amen, to her not realizing, uh, amen, that he was going to give her an opportunity to, to become one of the children of the Most High God. Amen, he was going to give her an opportunity, amen, to, uh, to be able to bypass religion uh, and receive salvation. That's another message for another time. Uh, amen, there's a lot of people today, amen, they received religion uh, and they're miserable today. Uh, amen, I like the old Christian saying, uh, amen, you catch them and God will clean them. Uh, Amen. Sometimes people try to clean them. Uh, amen. Before you ever get them to the church. Uh, amen. If you try to get them to dress like you dress, talk like you draw talk. Uh, amen. Act like you. We need to bring every heathen we can find. Uh, amen. Into the church. And the wilder and the more rougher they are, bring them in. Uh, let the Prince of Peace calm them. Uh, amen. Let him. Uh, amen. Give them hope and life. Uh, amen. It's the Spirit of God. Uh, amen. That moves upon us. Uh, amen. That makes us who that we are today. Day. It's the Spirit of God, uh, amen, that moves upon us, uh, amen, that causes us to be accepted, uh, amen, by those that says, I don't know uh, who in the world that is, uh, but I just can't get away from that. Uh, it absolutely has uh, drawn my attention. Uh, Amen. I heard somebody one time uh, met me somewhere in a store around town. They said, I've been watching you on television and, and said, I don't know anything about you. And I don't know anything about going to church, but I got to watching you and I couldn't turn the television off. I was scared I was going to miss uh, what you were going to say next. Uh, and next thing you know, uh, amen, his wife uh, uh, spoke up and said, I'll tell you something else. Uh, I couldn't get him to go to church, uh, and, and, but he got to watching you uh, and he got to crying. Uh, he got under conviction and one Sunday he went to the little Baptist church right down below 
Bible warehouse and he went to the altar and he got saved. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. That the Lord today has the ability through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You might not understand this Kentucky hillbilly dialect real good. Amen. Some of you can understand it because you understand what fire and over there and all of that kind of stuff is but some of the rest of you may have a hard time understanding that in other countries. Let the Holy Ghost to help you get to understanding. Amen. That I'm talking about the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And I believe you will feel his anointing and his presence. Amen. While the word is being preached and you'll have a hunger and a desire to find out more about Jesus. Amen. If there's ever a time, amen, that we need the Lord, we need him today. Amen. Some says, well, I found him years ago. I'm sure glad that I did. I found him too. And I'm going to tell you something else. Amen. I refind him every little bit. It's not because I backslide and get out of church. I just get my faith renewed every now and then. Amen. So because he has to show up and show me he's bigger than I ever thought that he was. <laughs> amen. Whenever the situation comes up, amen, you got something that's impossible, just give it to the one that will go to Jacob's well and sit on the edge and wait for you to get there. <laughs> amen. Just give it to the one uh, Amen. that's waiting for you to come by and to believe. Uh, amen. Give it to the one uh, Amen. that caused you to turn this on. Uh, not by chance. Uh, amen. But by design. Uh, amen. God, uh, believe in the one. Uh, amen. That caused you to be here today and caused your attention. Uh, amen. To get on the word today instead of on plum and uh, uh, all this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, what's this stuff? Uh, hanging up mistletoe, hanging up in a tree and all that kind of stuff. Get your mind on something uh, that you ought to be thinking about. Uh, amen. Not drinking eggnog. Uh, amen. But get your mind uh, amen, on drinking the living water. Amen. That comes from glory. That God wants to bless the church. Uh, fill the church. Uh, amen. And let the love of Jesus explode on the inside. Uh, amen. That when you invite somebody to the church, uh, amen, it'll get in the bed with them. Uh, amen. They won't be able to tell you no, uh, amen, without God uh, dealing with them. Uh, and they may say, I ain't a coming. Uh, and the next morning you see them pull up in the churchyard, uh, amen, because the love of the Lord uh, is upon you in such a way you presented Christ, uh, amen, with dignity. You presented Christ, uh, amen, with love and with patience. If somebody, amen, uh, uh, rebukes you or, 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 or turns you away or rejects you. Amen. Don't go off on that person and tell them that they're a lop eared idiot. Uh, amen. Or don't talk to them. Uh, amen. Bad and run them down. I'm preaching to somebody today. Amen. But look to them and say, well, I'm going to pray for you. I love you. I know that God's going to make a difference in your life. Uh, amen. And pray without ceasing. I talked to somebody this morning that's got a, a hopeless situation in one of the nearby towns. Uh, amen. A, a marriage has been torn all to pieces and a home broken all to pieces because of sin. Uh, amen. It's an impossible situation. Uh, and I told the person when I, uh, just before I prayed with them and after I prayed for them, uh, uh, with them on the telephone, uh, I said, This is going to take a move of God. Man cannot do this. Religion cannot do this. It's going to take the supernatural power of God to come and break the yoke of bondage uh, and to break the yoke of sin. Uh, it's going to take God, uh, amen, to cause your uh, spouse to have their eyes open to where they can see right from wrong and your children to understand, uh, amen, and to realize they've been lied to and they've been deceived, uh, amen. The truth will always come out. Uh, we just need to pray that God, uh, amen, would snap the back of this thing, uh, amen, that's come against you. We need to pray that God, uh, amen, would move miraculously. Amen. When uh, nobody really believes that God's going to move, uh, don't know where he's going to move, uh, how it's going to happen, but God has a way. Uh, amen. For somebody, amen, to come up to you in a drive through pick on your window, amen, and tell you that Jesus wanted you to know that he loves you uh, and he'll forgive you. Uh, you'll never know, uh, amen, what you're doing, how it's going to minister to someone. Amen. I went through a drive through uh, at Hardy's and got breakfast not long ago. And I got up there and they said, thank you and come back. And I had my money in my hand. They said, the car in front of you just paid for it. Have a good day, sir. Come back and see us. I said, well, praise the Lord. And I told Jenny, I said, well, looky here. Somebody's done bought our breakfast. That was really nice. You don't ever know when God, uh, amen, is going to come through for you. Amen. And I wish the TV evangelist could read my lips and to hear this. Uh, amen. God, uh, amen, can lay it on somebody's heart to send you 
you a check that your eyeballs will dance. Amen. Without you trying to beg for money and tell them how you need to sow seeds. Amen. I'm going to tell you, forget the seeds and listen to the voice of God. Amen. God knows how to send it. He knows where it's at. He knows how to get it there. Amen. Don't be trying to make false promises that your husband's going to come home and you're going to get your job back and your car is going to quit knocking. Hey man, because you give so much money into the church, I'm telling you, fall in love with Jesus. When you fall in love with Jesus, you'll pay your tithes like you ought to. And then we got the promises of the Word of God. Hey Amen. If we live for Him and pay our tithes, He's going to take care of us. Hey Amen. Enough said. And you don't have to have all that other malarkey. Hey Amen. The people tries to push down your throat. Hey Amen. So they can milk, <coughs> excuse me, and get our seed or a dollar from you. Hey Amen. Mm-hmm. All these people, amen, that says you need to send a seed, send a seed, and they got a whole warehouse full of them, ain't doing nothing with them. Mm. Hey, man, what are you going to do with a warehouse full of seed? Well, I can buy me another jet. You don't need another jet. What you need is God on your side. Hey, amen. far as I know, you can still get a plane ticket. Hey, man, you ain't no better than nobody else to have a limb hour lay over somewhere. Just prop up your feet and read the Bible. Whoo! Hey, man, everybody thinks they ought to be the president and have Air Force One. Hey, man, they ought to think the so-and-so Baptist Church, Air Force One. So-and-so Assembly of God, Air Force One. Hey man, you don't have to have that kind of stuff. All you got to have, amen, is a God and wait for him to send you, amen, to where he wants you at the time in your life. Amen, he wants you to be there. He'll open the doors. He will send the invitation. It'll be at his time and God will make provision, amen, when it's him doing it and not you trying to run out and do it, amen, so that you can inspire or not inspire, but you can influence someone. <sighs> or you can get more. Amen. You ought to stay at home and wait upon the Lord. They don't know nobody want to wait upon the Lord. That's just all of us. We're all like that. We don't want to wait upon the Lord, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. You're going to have to. Amen. You might as well just get used to it. Amen. Might as well just take your medicine. Amen. By a medicine dropper every day if you can't take a whole teaspoonful of it. I know you're thinking, Brother Jimmy, you're serving it by the tablespoon. I would give you the whole bottle if you're strong enough to take it. Amen, we need something besides Geritol. Amen, we need the power of God in our lives. Wait upon the Lord and let God bestow the miracles in front of you. Let him work the things out. Amen, let him fund it. Let him pay for it. Amen, let him design it. When it's the right time, the money will be there. When it's the right time with a devil fight, you better believe he'll fight. I remember when we built this church. It was one thing after three. Hey man, just something over and over again and again and again. I had to go back to the bank three times, hey man, and get extra money. Or I went three times to get money. Hey man, I went one time, had to go back two more times, three times total. Hey man, to get more money because everything wasn't working like it ought to. Hey man, the devil was fighting tooth and nail in every direction. But I saw a young man healed right over there on the pool pit before we ever got the doors in this place. And the sheetrock hung. Hey man, there was a man got saved uh, laying brick on the front part of the church out here and the bricklayer was a preacher and he won him to the Lord while he was up on the scaffold. Amen. I'm putting a mortar on the brick. Amen. That's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. The Lord allowed us to pay the thing off. Amen. After all these years, after 17 years. Amen. It was a 20 year note. We paid her off in 17 years with the poorest people there is in Kentucky. Some of the poorest ones. Amen. God will make a way. Amen. You may have amen, unstable people but if you got a stable ministry, God has seen you some in there just long enough, uh, amen, to help you before the next crew comes in. Amen. I heard a pastor say not long ago, uh, amen, he pastored six churches uh, and he stayed in the same building. Uh, he said, they left and I stayed, uh, but I pastored six churches over the last 40 years. I thought, man, you're in worse shape than I am. Uh, I, I thought I've been through some stuff. Uh, I thought, no wonder you can preach like you can. Uh, amen, preaching this man I ever heard in my life. I put him up against anybody. Amen, out in Oklahoma. Amen, he's a fireball. Uh, amen, but listen to hear what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, amen, God will lift you up. Uh, amen, 
you don't never know what God's got. Amen. Around the corner, some say, well, I'll just get bored with church. You know what? I get bored with church too. I do. But I don't get bored with Jesus. <laughs> amen. Sometimes, uh, amen, I get bored with my own preaching. I said, Lord, I preached on that scripture I know 150 times. Uh, and the Lord said, yeah, and you're going to do it again this morning. I'm not writing a new book for you to write to preach out of something different. I said, yes, Lord. I'll just get up and read it again. Amen. He ain't going to come down from heaven and write a new one so I can have a different sermon. Amen. Do like a pastor friend of mine said many, many, many years ago. He said, just get up and preach and just change the title of it and keep on going. (laughs) Amen. Uh, He's probably watching the TV uh, program today. I'm not going to call his name, but he'll know who he is. Uh, Amen. A real good man of God. But anyhow, uh, listen to what I'm trying to tell you today. The Lord, uh, amen, I'll put things together for you. Amen. If you ain't been able, amen, to get your chickens to live, it ain't the right time to be putting eggs under the nest. Amen, if you can't, amen, get your money to grow, it's not the right time. There'll be a season, amen, when God gets you, amen, where he wants you. Amen, the Lord had to get me to where I cry at the drop of the hat (laughs) to get me where I can minister to the rest of the world. Amen, he had to allow me to go through things that would break and tenderize. How many has ever seen a steak that you had to get a hammer out and put it on a platter and beat on that thing and get it tenderized or you couldn't chew it? Oh, yeah, the Lord's had to tenderize me for years. He's got the big hammer out, and he's beat and beat and allowed, amen, things to happen. Uh, Amen to me to get my heart tenderized, uh, amen, to the place to where I can minister like I need to. Uh, Amen, listen, you can't ever do anything, and I can't either, until we fall completely in love with Jesus, uh, until we realize that we can't eat, uh, we cannot breathe. uh, Amen, we don't even deserve to walk above ground uh, if it wasn't for the blessings of God uh, and God. God allowing us to get there. Amen. When we realize that we will never arrive until we step over into holy Jerusalem on the other side. Amen. Of death, chilly water. Then's when we're going to stop learning. And then's when we're going to stop growing. And then's when we're going to stop changing. And then's when the Lord's going to let us down. Amen. Therese, some says, when are you going to retire? And when you see my name on a tombstone out there in that cemetery, you'll say, the old boy finally quit. Amen, but until then, uh, amen, I'm going to preach. Uh, if I get to sick uh, and I can't get out of my bed, you just pull the camera over there and focus it down on me, and I'll try to get enough pillows to where they prop me up and hand me a microphone and a Bible, I'll preach uh, and let you know uh, it don't matter what kind of shape I'm in, every breath that I got this morning came from the Holy One, uh, and he's got a home for me in glory that I'll shine the sun, uh, and I've got a better place to go to, uh, amen, and he's my savior. He's my friend. He's my deliverer. He's my king. And he's with me through everything. Hallelujah. We're going to face obstacles. We're going to face changes. Amen. Can I slow down just a minute and preach and teach a little bit here? Many years ago, I was a preaching and the Lord introduced me to radio. The first time I got on the radio, I thought I'd have a heart attack. My knees trembled and shook just like it right there. I was down in Scottsville, Kentucky. Brother uh, Joe Hargis had a little mission out there called Tunnel Mission Church uh, out there on Tunnel Mission Road. And I went in that little church, and he uh, let me preach on the radio that day. I was scared to death. I thought I would die. I read the Scripture. My voice was trembling. And all at once, when I got the Scripture read, there was something come up my back and across both shoulders. And, man, when I got done, I thought I was going to eat that microphone. There wasn't no fear, no horror. Man, I, Utah, I ain't never heard uh, myself preach one any stronger than I did that day. Boy, it was anointed. Uh, amen. The power of God came in that little place. Uh, everybody in there was a crying and a shouting. Uh, amen. There's about 10 or 12 that went out there with me to, uh, to be in the radio station. Uh, I made it through that one. Then I was on radio for years and years and years. Uh, and then I come on television. Uh, I thought I'd die the first time. It wasn't recorded like this one is. Uh, you couldn't go back and edit my stupidity out of it. <laughs> hey man, and all my bobbles and mistakes and reading the wrong scripture. 
<laughs> and things like that, amen, that I've done. But what I'm trying to say is, amen, I, I was scared to death, but man, when the anointing come, I was ready to eat the microphone and the lights. It didn't make any difference. I made it through another trial, amen. Then we got to live streaming, and then I got on television in Chicago, and now on radio in 175 countries, and now they've invited me to come and preach in a conference in Lisbon, Portugal this coming summer, and going to be uh, preaching to hundreds of people uh, in a conference over there. The next thing I'm going to have to whip, uh, amen, is getting on an airplane without them putting me under something. <laughs> or hit me in the head with a hammer. But if God gets me there, I'll climb on the thing. Uh, if I know he kills me, amen, if I know the Lord's uh, telling me to go, uh, amen, just climb on that, put my faith and trust in God. Uh, amen, there's no telling what'll happen. Uh, amen, in another year or two, uh, amen, I may be on that thing every two weeks or going somewhere. I hope not, but I might. You never know. I sure ain't going to say I ain't going to. If I did, if I'd said that, I'd have to wind up being one of them stewards or stewardesses. <laughs> <sighs> win souls for the Lord around the world. Sir, would you like another cup of coffee? <laughs> Jesus loves you. <laughs> Oh, you never know what the Lord's going to do. Uh, amen. God can take you from one place, uh, amen, to another. There's no limit, uh, amen, to where God's going to take you, amen, to where you're going to go. And the only way you're going to ever grow, amen, is to get so small you can't get up by yourself. And finally the Lord's going to pick you up, uh, amen, and say, I've been waiting for you to get small enough for me to use you. As long as you're big, I like to preach that to some of the TV evangelists. As long as you're big, you're going to remain little. As long as you're big, you're going to have to try to get people to send seeds in. You're going to have to convince them, I'm doing this on your account. <laughs> You'd have been poor if it hadn't been for me getting your money. Hey Amen. Some of y'all ain't got that yet. Hey Amen. You understand what I'm saying? But when you get big in the Lord, uh, you can say God's going to lay it on somebody's heart. I don't know who you are, but I want to thank you in advance. I'm going to get all I need. Hey Amen. And let God take care of it. And if he don't send it in, you need to stay right where you're at. Amen. Be who you are in the place that you are. If he's got you in Barron County, don't try to get in, in Warren County. You need to be right here in Barron County. If you need to be in Bar Warren, Bar Warren County, don't try to come to Barron County or go somewhere else. Amen. Abide in your calling is what Paul said. We can't get people today to stay in the same church. Hmm. Praise God, I just been to a half a dozen. They didn't done, done do what I wanted them to, so thank God I just went and started me one. I could say a whole lot of other things, and I'd just make people mad, so I'm going to leave that alone. Amen. What we need is to follow the Spirit of God. And number one thing God's going to put you under, He's going to put you under the authority of a pastor that will look you right in the eyeball to eyeball every Sunday and preach everything against everything you've even done or even thought of. Hey man, every Sunday, and teach you how to grow, and teach you how to become little, and to teach and teach you how to manage your money and be responsible. Uh, amen. To teach you to check and to double check yourself. Amen. In everything that you do, amen, so that you'll become a good steward. To, amen. When you have to slice and dice and stretch every penny, amen, in order to get something to survive, uh, the Lord's saying, well, I believe we're getting about the place where they understand now. But you can't understand it until you learn to save what you make. Can I say this to those Americans? I don't know how you folks are in Portugal and um, uh, Japan uh, and uh, Saudi Arabia and, and uh, the Philippines and all these other places that's watching from around the world, France and different places watching from around the world, but I know how Americans is. If you make $100, you'll blow 90 of it on a bunch of junk. Amen? Because there's a whole bunch of whiz-bangs out there that's got the idea that they know just how to get that away from you and they're doing this for your benefit. <laughs> hey, man, a good, good scam artist to tell you, let me have that $90 out of that 100 because this is really going to help you. <laughs> and you're going to be convinced. Hey, man. And sometimes there'll be things that will work or will appear to work. See, if God's already got a blessing going to your house, 
and it's going to arrive at 7 o'clock in the morning. You can get out here this evening and get it in your head that Rumble Steel Skin done it or that Mary Poppins brought it. You can think anything you want to. Or somebody could jump up and say, I claim, uh, uh, the, I claim you know, uh, the uh, initial responsibility of being the one that got you all this. But see, it's God that done it in the first place. No matter who takes honor for it, no, no matter who claims responsibility. Did you ever notice that responsibility, if it's to where the people's going to say, yay, everybody wants that responsibility, but if it's the one's going to say, jail them, <laughs> they say, not with me, Dunny. It's my wife. <laughs> it's my mother in law. It's, it's my next door neighbor. It's my boss. I don't like him anyhow. It's the president that done it. It was George Bush. <laughs> Two presidencies, presidencies later, and it's still him. Three terms later, and it's still him. Hey, man, they done it. If it wasn't him, it was his wife, whatever her name was. Hey, man, got to blame it on somebody. Somebody has to have the blame. Now, I'm going to bring my remarks to a close. It ain't dark yet, is it? Bring my remarks to a close today. I preach just what the Lord's laid on my heart. I've just reared back and let her fly today. Follow the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. If you've got a need of any kind, this altar is open. If you're watching by television, <clears throat> you've got an opportunity to be able to call and for prayer. If you're listening by radio, check us out on the website. Be glad to pray with you. Send me an email, whatever. If you're got a need of any kind in your heart. It don't matter what it is. God knows what it is. You bring it. And if you don't feel like that you've got a need, you want to come pray for a family member, or you just want to come and pray for this ministry, that will be fine. You just come. Amen. God will bless you. God will move. God will touch your heart. Listen, folks, we're in the last days. We're drawing to an end. This thing's drawing to an end. And the Lord sending uh, forth his messengers, sending forth the word, sending the warning around the planet today because he's getting ready to wind this thing up. If you're not prepared to meet God, you need to get ready. Let's all stand together. I'm going to say goodbye to the uh, TV crowd, the live streaming folks. Come back tonight. We've got some scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 about divorce and remarriage. And we're going to show you what the Bible says. Been enough denominations and religion and religious people and preachers putting out their opinions. We're going to see what thus saith the Word of God tonight. So you tune us back in tonight at 645 right here for those watching by live streaming.